One of the biggest misconceptions about assisted suicide is that it's a bodily autonomy issue that's about individual choice. Um, but what that outlook really ignores is that individual choice is not often up to the most vulnerable or the most marginalized patients. It's up to insurers predominantly and also up to hospitals and physicians. Um, and so what we really want people to understand about this issue is that it's more than just um, you know, an issue of personal choice at the end of life. Um, a lot of it is a public health and anti-discrimination issue as well, particularly against those in the disability community. Um, another misconception about assisted suicide is that people choose to pursue assisted suicide because of physical pain at the end of life. Um, but what we've actually been finding from the most recent um, data reported in Oregon um, which is a state where assisted suicide is legal, um, is that the top five most prevalent reasons that people choose assisted suicide at the end of life um, is not because they're in physical pain, but because they have um, socio-emotional concerns about disability. So they're afraid to lose their autonomy. They feel like they're going to suffer a loss of dignity because of certain symptoms such as incontinence and loss of independence. Um, and so what we hope to impart to people is that disabled people's lives have value and we're not better off dead than disabled, um, which is unfortunately a misconception that a lot of people have that leads them into uh, promoting assisted suicide. Why is it so important to stand against this issue? There are people who believe that a terminally ill patient has the right to end their life as long as it's their choice. What's your response to this? Well, the first thing I want to say is that for people who are terminally ill, who are really truly at the end of life and who are in a lot of pain, there are other options that are available for them apart from assisted suicide, such as palliative sedation, where somebody can be sedated to a point that they no longer feel physical pain while the dying process takes place naturally. So that's one, one point to cover. Another thing to know is that um, oftentimes the idea that it's a personal choice that other people don't have influence over is kind of an illusion. Um, for example, there have been cases of people um, that we've seen coming out of Oregon and Washington who, for example, their insurance company denied coverage for a life-saving treatment but approved coverage for assisted suicide. So at that point, are you actually able to make a choice or is the insurance company making the choice for you? Mm -hmm. Those are the types of dangers and exploitations that can occur as a result of our privatized um, medical industry. And that's why kind of the concept and the policy of assisted suicide and our current medical landscape really don't um, mesh together in a way that promotes true safety and autonomy for people. There's also a huge lack of uh, enforcement. So even though a lot of times assisted suicide advocates will push for safeguards to be added to the law, um, those safeguards don't do any good if they're not being enforced by anybody. Um, and so, for example, um, you know, the idea of um, making having safeguards in place that are supposed to make it so that somebody isn't being coerced um, into pursuing assisted suicide. Um, there's really no way to to enforce things like that. And so it's it's not a law that can be improved once it's been passed. Um, if it's passed, the danger is still there. All right. And in Massachusetts, a lot of the conversation is revolving around the Kligler v. Healy case. Uh, would you be able to walk us through uh, this civil lawsuit and what is at stake in the current arguments uh, around it? Sure thing. Um, so basically, short summary of Kligler v. Healy, um, there is a Dr. Robert Kligler who brought this case up um, in 2016. Um, he has cancer and um, basically wants to make it legal for him to die in the manner and at the time that he so chooses without the doctor facilitating that death being held legally liable um, in a criminal sense. Um, and the case has kind of escalated to the point where it's become a question of, is assisted suicide a constitutional right? 
Um, and what we have found over and over again, both in other states where cases like this have been heard, and also even in the Suffolk County Court at earlier stages in this case, is that assisted suicide is absolutely not a constitutional right. Um, there's really no basis for it in the letter of the law. And also, this is an issue that should be decided in the legislature and not by a handful of judges who aren't representative of all of the different ki kinds of people who this would impact um, if the policy is passed. There are no easy answers to this debate um, and topic, but what are your hopes for individuals who are just starting to learn more about um, medically uh, medical assistance in dying or um, assisted suicide? My hope is that people will take the time to learn about the ways in which this is a systemic issue and an issue of disability rights and justice and not just looking at it from the framework of individual rights and autonomy. Um, you know, as we've seen with even the COVID-19 pandemic, for example, when we think about something like mask wearing as uh, an individual autonomy issue, um, it makes more sense for people to not want to choose to do it. But when we think of it as a public health issue where we're putting other people at harm, even unintentionally by not wearing a mask, um, it makes a lot more sense and it's a lot more compelling to understand why masking is important. By the same token, legalizing assisted suicide um, might make sense as a practice for a very narrow and well-protected um, portion of the population. Um, but when we zoom out and look at those who are the most vulnerable to um, bias and prejudice in the medical industrial complex, um, people who are most vulnerable to mistreatment, those who are really on the margins um, of our society and culture, um, it makes a lot more sense not to pass assisted suicide to protect those less privileged people. And for people who would like to learn more or support the work that's happening at Second Thoughts Massachusetts or Not Dead Yet, how can they do so? Yeah, so folks can visit um, the website of either organization. So Second Thoughts is at second-thoughts.org, and that's the word second-thoughts.org. And then Not Dead Yet um, is, is the organization that is handling this more on the national scale, so outside of just Massachusetts. And we're at uh, notdeadyet.org. So if you head to our websites, you can also find links to our social media, um, to other publications that we have, other ways that we've collaborated um, with other organizations. Um, and there are also links on both websites where you can get involved. So if you live in Massachusetts, I uh, highly recommend checking out the Second Thoughts website, um, getting in touch with us, and uh, we would be happy to welcome more people uh, into learning about this issue and getting involved.